Father! Please! Ah! Where do I even begin with this hedgehog? With his pothead? Perhaps his powers? Silver the Hedgehog is a character who was created for a specific purpose, but has never lived up to it. That purpose being to form a staple main trio for the Sonic series alongside Shadow and Sonic. But today, Silver is considered to be many different things by many different people. Overall, I think it would be fair to say that Silver is generally liked amongst the Sonic community. There are plenty of people who now wish to see more of him, even to grant him his own spin-off game. Unfortunately for those fans, Sega doesn't seem to know what they want to do with his character, much like with the rest of the cast. For the majority of the games in which Silver is present, he is simply repeating the same theme of trying to revert an apocalyptic future and never really seems to get to develop beyond that. If going just off the games alone, it doesn't seem like there was much of a reason for Silver to gain popularity and recognition in the way he has, but the games were not the only depiction of Silver going around. In the comics, Silver the Hedgehog receives a different origin story, personality and allies. Naturally, he still shares some of the same traits with his video game counterpart, but he was given more time to develop and establish an actual identity beyond his mission. This tale of two Silvers that has come about can be attributed to both the successful reception of Silver's comic book characterization, alongside the video game's ambiguity surrounding just about all aspects of Silver's identity. It is quite likely that at least Silver's ambiguous game portrayals were intentional though, a show of hesitancy from Sega that holds the character back. A hesitancy that traces back to Silver's first appearance, Sonic 06. We all know about the history of Sonic 2006 at this point, so I won't waste my time repeating it here. Thanks to the game's monumentally bad reception at release, many people would come to associate all aspects of that game's failure with the downfall of the series' reputation. Silver the Hedgehog was one of the icons under which the detractors of Sonic 06 would rally. He was hated much like the game itself, and for his debut appearance, this would cripple the character's chances from the start. Not to say his hatred wasn't warranted to some degree, however. Silver was naive, whiny, clumsy. He repeatedly got in the way of Sonic, causing him to have to repeatedly save the same princess over and over while Silver would talk down to him. <laughs> Is this a joke? A lot of his phrases also seem to have been designed to cause the player's own frustration, but it may have been too effective. It's no use! It's no use! It's no use! Silver was annoying for many people. This irritating aura persisted into the character's gameplay as well. Silver was far slower than Sonic and Shadow, which wouldn't have been a problem if the designers had accounted for this when creating his stages. They clearly didn't, however, as Silver is given very large areas to explore, such as Tropical Jungle, or even the hub worlds, which take him far too long to traverse. Silver did bring his psychokinesis powers to the table, but he can't manipulate opponents without stunning them first. Silver can only stun them with a slap of abysmal range, where he's likely to get hit if he does not have any upgrades. Somehow, the concept of throwing things around with your mind was completely wasted in Sonic 06, and it has not been attempted since. Silver was left feeling clunky and unfinished, with slow gameplay to match his slow movement. Considering most people already had a negative opinion of him before playing his story, it's no wonder he was hated. Personally, I very much disliked Silver when I played Sonic 06 and for a long time afterwards. He left such a negative first impression in his debut game that left me with no desire to see anything else from him. His gameplay was terrible enough. One of the worst moments for me was that stupid ball puzzle he had, which nowadays I just glitch through. The character's whinging also bothered me. It probably wasn't helped that he was contrasted by Blaze, who acted with certainty much like Sonic and Shadow, so Silver just came off as abnormally childish. That said, my stance on Silver has changed over recent years. Now that I have a better grasp on Silver's situation, as well as more life experience in general, the traits I found annoying at first now play to the character's strength. 
the stakes of his story are severe, and they have taken their toll upon the young hedgehog. His naivety and general fascination with the world of the past, and the people in it, show how positive Silver is, for the world he comes from should have made him jaded and untrusting. And while Silver starts off like a fish out of water, his character does undergo growth over the course of the story. Thanks to the other members of the Sonic cast, Silver learns the truth of his situation as well as deciding to atone for his previous mistakes. A lot of this growth flew over my head before, because the character is outwardly irritating, making me unlikely to care, as well as the game's general incomplete nature harming opinions as well. I can also see why other people may have liked Silver from the start. Whilst characters like Sonic, Shadow and Blaze were confident and committed to their respective missions, Silver was hesitant. He wondered whether or not he was doing the right thing. He made mistakes which carried heavy consequences, and all of it with the responsibility of saving his future. Silver was probably a character many people could relate to more than any of the others that were present in Sonic 2006. Despite all of that, however, I suspect that for the vast majority of Silver fans, it was not the game's portrayal of Silver they like, whether they know it or not. You see, after Sonic 06, Silver has few appearances in the narrative. Sonic Rivals sets him up with a completely new backstory, which is meant to act the same as his 06 origins in effect, but this also resets his knowledge of Sonic & Co. As such, he does not develop any of the bonds he made in Sonic 06, and just isn't very interesting in my opinion. Beyond the Rivals games, he had a brief cameo in Sonic Colors DS, where he is mainly making references to the events of Sonic 06. Then again in Generations, where much like Shadow, he battles Sonic for unknown reasons and then sits on the sidelines. Of course, we cannot forget Silver's presence in the magnum opus that is Sonic Forces. Silver really should have played an important role in this game, considering he was one of the most powerful characters present. But like many things in Forces, we are given little details of what he was up to, even on how he was present to begin with. We do see him go head to head with Infinite, but he doesn't get to do much beyond that. Although now we know Silver is an... I'm an optimist, but I'm also a realist. Optimist and realist. Silver's most recent appearance is Team Sonic Racing, but his behaviour here is rather different to his prior games. This ties back into what I was alluding to earlier. The comics took their own direction with how they characterised Silver. He was still related to the concept of trying to save his future from some sort of disaster, but his circumstances were altered. He had different allies, learned different lessons, all in all Silver ends up growing into a different person here. Many traits are shared between the two versions, but for the comic book Silver, his optimism and naivety are cranked up a lot. He is a lot more positive and a lot less serious, coming off as goofy and endearing. That is not to say he doesn't know how to put his foot down, in fact by doing so he had caused himself problems in some stories, it's just he clearly prefers to bring happiness to those around him. To me, it appears that this is truly the Silver that the majority of his fans like the most to the point where even if unconsciously, they imposed some of his comic book qualities onto the video games, where there wasn't really a precedent for him acting in such a way before. The thing is though, is this really a bad idea? What have the games actually been doing with Silver anyway? Like I said before, he's mostly just repeating his 06 arc or appearing in brief cameos. The games haven't developed his character, given him any new gameplay, or even increased his role in the stories. The comic version of Silver is more fleshed out in just about every way, and most of that was built from the foundation of his 06 appearance. Perhaps Sega feels this way as well, for the Silver in Team Sonic Racing does resemble the comic book Silver in some ways. He definitely seems a lot more simple, but also rather bubbly and positive. As for myself, I kind of want to see his video game version get more chances to grow and improve. The comics aren't going anywhere, and there is nothing wrong with how they have used Silver, but I have grown to like that sense of responsibility Silver from Sonic 06 had, even if his inexperience often caused him to make mistakes. Maybe you might think there isn't really a big difference between the Silvers, 
but at least to me, it's large enough to where I would rather Sega tries improving on his original depiction. So, what are your thoughts on the topic? Do you have a preference? Have you even read the comic? Ultimately, the most important thing for Silver is that he actually gets to be playable in a game again. But that's not looking like it will happen anytime soon. Thank you for watching throughout the entire video. I hope you have a great day, and see you next time.